this the one? G'day guys and welcome to the next episode of the Two Red Chairs podcast. Today I have a very special friend all the way from Oahu, Hawaii. It is Mario Casada. How are you doing, good sir? I am doing well, man. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, just likewise. Um, now, Mario, you are a uh, prolific Instagrammer in terms of mindset content. Now, today, that's what I want to talk about with you, um, especially because we're both solopreneurs. We run our own business. Mario runs his own business, Made by Maker, and mine, G'day Frank. And uh, we're also dads. We have we work from home. We have children, and um, there's, there's challenges in that kind of thing, and that's something we might get into towards the end of this podcast. But Mario, I want to uh, jump right into this and talk about, you know, as creatives and working from home, especially when it's just ourselves, we don't have that sounding board um, of another designer or a team to riff off when, you know, we kind of think, is this good enough? Is my you know logo good enough? Is my website design, is that hitting the mark without first showing a client? Um, you know, in terms of that mindset, how would you go about that or how do you go about in your daily life or suggest to others to, to you know, really get into a positive mindset to really back yourself? Oh, that's a big question. Um, it's huge. Really I'm sorry. Question, <laughs> <laughs> let's start off. Let's start off with a home run. That's it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So let me just, I just want to clarify just how do you stay motivated to continue to go? And yeah, let's, going let's and start with stay positive. Let's stay with the positivity part. And okay. to, to get into a way of, of framing how you approach your work um, to, to really back yourself. Um, positivity is a hard thing. You know, um, any, anything can, can get you out of the mood, right? And, and kind of like sideline you, especially if you're a dad, especially if you're at home doing work at home, trying to scrape time together to, to do what you need to do, provide for your family. Um, but really for me, there's, there's, there's two things. Um, I continue to think about my family and, um, the blessings that they are. So daily, I just try to practice gratitude. And, um, I think that's, that's one of the most practical and tangible things that we can do is just really practice gratitude. And, and, and it's, it's a practice. It's not, it's not something that you just have and you're done, you know, you need to daily kind of get into it and practice. Um, what does just I can I, if I can jump ahead, in yeah. there? What what does yeah. that look like? You know, as, as a as a tangible aspect, is it having some sort of mantra, kind of thing, something to set, tell yourself, you know, repetitively on a daily basis or something like that? Or I think it's more um, practical than repetitive. Um, okay. I think every day I, I continue to remind myself of the beautiful family that I have, um, yeah. the blessing that it is to live in Hawaii, even though it's very hard to live here. Um, but there's, there's a, you know, the, I, I'm very blessed to live in a, one of the most beautiful places in the world. Um, and, and I keep focus on what's going right in my life and what's, what's really good in my life instead of really focusing on the small little things that can really drive us down a, a really negative rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm of a similar kind of opinion to to look at the opportunity that you have as someone that doesn't have to work the nine to five, which yeah. people go, uh, you can work on your own terms, but you know, at the end of the day, you do have your own business, and it probably takes over you a bit uh, more so than working in a nine to five, where you probably can switch off once you leave the doors, because. I definitely knew I could do that when I used to be in a full-time job where as soon as I walked out at 5.30, I was switched off. Like I was out of there. I didn't think about work until I walked back in there at 9 a.m. the next day. Whereas when you have a business, you are thinking <laughs> about it constantly and constantly. But in terms of a creative doing this kind of thing, you know, we're all having to come up with new ideas. And I always wonder how a lonely designer out there copes with this kind of pressure on themselves really because they can't articulate what they're talking about other than to a client that isn't a creative themselves most of the time um, and, and what would your I guess best opinion or, or practice if you were to reach out to somebody else that is a designer or um, to internalize it and be self-aware and as you were talking about then um, be self-reflective and be grat grateful for what you've got. Um, yeah. Or is it, you know, it's probably all of the above, I'd imagine. <laughs> it's definitely all of the above. I think, 
I think as solopreneurs, and you've done a, an amazing job of this as well with Good Day Design Live and, and, and even just your, your social media presence, I think the practice of having and going out and obtaining community, good solid community that you can bounce ideas off of, that you can just build camaraderie with, you know, like yeah. you and I have like across the world, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, we get to we get to connect with people that are the utmost best at what they do and um you know some people don't have the same personalities as we do some people do we strike it up we strike off a really good friendship you know thousands of miles away which is which is amazing to me and and so the more the more we can actually be social on social media i think there's there's huge benefits to that because then we start thinking like like the last six to seven months um myself i've gone from really barely posting social media and not really having community there to having this huge broad community um, on social media and and people that that I really consider friends now which like yourself um, yeah. they're handsome debonair Aussie friends oh come on <laughs> this is how Larry got on the show everybody <laughs> <laughs> it's true it's very true um, but really it's it's really about like obtaining community and knowing what you need first I think knowing that you need community know that knowing that designing in a black hole is just going to get you nothing right it's going to get you lonely it's going to get you spent it's going to get you uh completely uh emptied out of of your own creative faculties uh knowing that we need community to to spawn spawn better work from ourselves and and we can help others well others as well i mean that's i think the big takeaway for from my own perspective of, of joining a global based design community here on instagram you know somehow I, I feel like i sort of stumbled into it and you discover peep one person then it kind of is a little rabbit hole into the rest of everybody else that appears on, on social media and I'll, I'll just chime in as well mario's got little kids in the background so if you hear <laughs> Sorry, those guys. ones <laughs> that's yeah, all good yeah. we're dads we're solopreneur it's... dads or as mario calls them dadpreneurs because dadpreneurs. parentpreneur is too long <laughs> <laughs> parentpreneur is too hard to say yeah yeah, yeah exactly so um in it, back to what i was saying was yeah from my own experience, having that community, not just an Australian community as a designer, because there are a lot of Australian designers, but having a more broadly global community um, has sort of helped me come out of a shell maybe, is maybe what you desc- self-describe as a, an introverted designer, to then have more confidence and then practice what you preach about what you talk about with, for me, it's branding and then when I talk to a client now, it's so much more confident because I'm a bit more dynamic on social and being social with more people and talking. Whereas I think, yeah. you know, if, if we were holed up in our office at home and just, you know, doing our own thing and, and just, dis- com- you know, communicating from everyone else, and you'd probably be still that very quiet kind of reserved designer that hopes for a new job kind of thing. And you don't make those connections as well with other businesses too, potentially. Yeah, I think you. I think you. You kind of like unearthed something pretty, pretty remarkable when you said that, you know, having a global community <clears throat> and being social on social media has brought out in you um, yeah. a more dynamic presence in person, which is huge. I think you know some people. Many people are like very social on social media and complete hermits in real life, but. Uh, to to approach social media as you have, and I think as, as I have as well as a little bit, um, just to to go out and, and purposefully build community, and that's the point of it. Yeah. And interact with people, purposely get on the phone. Um, I don't think I've ever done as many uh, video calls in my life within the last six months, but I love it because it it really brings it brings the person into your your home. It brings the person into your presence, and and you can you can talk to them. You can you can interact with them and you know they're, they're literally thousands of everybody's thousands of miles away from me because yep. i'm in hawaii and there's really you know a very small amount of designers here mm. um but the design community at large that that i'm i'm really connected to is there's a lot of australian designers and there's a lot of uh people on the mainland um like the contiguous united states um yep. and then uh europe as well which is insane to me because this is all, this is all literally happened in the last six months yeah so. yeah and it kind of feels like instagram has been that perpetuator of, of building some sort of yeah. uh, organic community and connections and, and building and for for those of you that are aussie designers um, listening to this 
uh, I, I see your 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 um, following and who you're following, and a lot of the time it's not the people that I'm following. It's it's mainly other designers that you've either gone to uni with or design school with, or people in the Aussie design industry. I'd, I'd hazard a guess that you've probably not heard of even the future before, or or people like Mario that are from different countries outside Australia that do all this same kind of thing and have different experiences, but we're all walk, working toward like the same goal, and I think that's what's just amazing that we're all having the same problems we're all having the same mindset challenges and um you know i keep saying we're all playing the same game here it's nothing different yeah absolutely i think the the only difference is our address right and we're all going to face the same exact problems how do you get clients how do you keep them happy how do you do good work how do you how do you compete in a market that's flooded with design yeah Um, you know these are all these are all very similar issues that all of us face um the world round and the more we can bounce those those questions off each other, I think it just makes us better um, as a community and, and also just better business people. That's cool. So I think I guess that kind of translates into um, as uh, you know a working business owner, we do have to work with clients as well. And yeah. I think one of the biggest challenges that I probably didn't anticipate as much was knowing how to be confident of your own value in what you do and how you present that value either monetarily or in the services that you provide and you kind of get this self-doubt or as it's also known imposter syndrome to communicate your value and and be sure in that what you are delivering is of value to somebody else um, especially monetarily yeah Yeah. Um, go ahead uh, basically I just want to know from your perspective Mario if there's one instance that has affected you quite significantly in this this sort of space and maybe how you overcome that now on a continuous basis continual basis if it does keep creeping up here and there um imposter syndrome self-doubt self-worth all of that stems from a very um, very deep place inside all of all of us from from and it comes from very different sources, right? And and I think knowing <clears throat> knowing yourself and, and being self aware as much as you can be um, to know where those voices are coming from of of um, unworthiness or um, valuelessness of yourself because that's where that's really where it all stems from, right? Uh, the more you can actually uh, investigate those voices inside you that that are telling you those things, um, the the more the more you can conquer those voices inside you because you know you you're a human being you have worth you have if you're a designer you're a problem solver that means you are you are you're hired to solve someone's problems and and whether whether or not you deem yourself worthy to charge x amount of money per hour or per project or value based pricing whatever kind of pricing model you use um, the the key is to um, really know in yourself that your job is to help somebody else. And if you are helping somebody else, then, then it doesn't really matter how much they're willing to pay you, um, in a sense, right? Obviously, if they're, if they're, if they're not willing to pay you, uh, enough or what you're worth or market value, then you you definitely got to find better, better clients. But, um, at the end of the day, I think we get we, we only get imposter syndrome when people are willing to pay us a large sum of money to do what we feel is almost our duty. Designers are some of the most selfless people I've ever met. They want to do if if they could, they would work for free because it's their passion. It's what they do. They love to help people. They love to solve problems. But the the, the fact of the matter is, I've got to put food on my my kids' plate. I've got to I've got to pay rent. I've got to you know, I, I've got to save for buying a house one day. I, I got to go, I got to go save for my Australian trip so I can go visit Good Day Frank. You know, like there's all these things that, that I've got to do and, and it takes money to do that. So if my talent is solving problems, then, then shouldn't we get paid for that? And that's a very practical, uh, simplistic answer. But at the end of the day, it's, it's really a, a, a simpler problem to solve, just knowing who we are and charging accordingly. You know, don't, don't, don't really don't try to extort people for money but 
know your worth, know the market value, and, and know what you can charge, and, and, and be worth it. And when I say that, I mean, do all you can to solve their problem, because that's really what they're hiring you for. That's huge. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's nearly one of my kind of rambles. <laughs> <laughs> like the, um, I'm just going to point out quickly, if you're watching this on YouTube or IGTV, my camera is really foggy at the moment. So if there's a big fog that you can see like on one side or another, that's what it is. I had flooding in my garage here and my camera's just started to fog up. So it should dissipate if you're watching. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like I'm watching, you're watching Days of Our Lives where they put that smudge Ooh, over. Stinging. But yeah, I think in terms of the practicality of doing the job that needs to be done and getting past that fear and just going, look, this is what I have to do to either survive or to support or to be happy. At the end of the day, you get past those inner demons that that really compound sometimes when you really start questioning things. And, you know, if it's if it's unquestioning and realizing where those questions are coming from to be able to battle it, I think that's that's where it's going to to change and start shifting your mindset, especially when you you do have one win and then you have the next win and then the next and the next. You might have a couple of failures in there where clients might not say yes, um, but over time you're going to build up this confidence. And if you don't have it now, I think I think you would agree with this, that over time you, you're going to get there and, and always have that trust in yourself that you will always get better, just the same as you would get better as a designer in your technical ability the way that you would be as a business owner, as um, an entrepreneur, whatever, however you frame yourself as a design business owner, um, that good things will happen. Yeah, I think, I think the more we, we practice good business practices, the better we're going to get at what we do, right? Yeah. And yeah. The, better, the better we get, the more confidence we, we get instilled in us by just mere repetition of of situation um michael janda had, was joking one time he's like i can walk in a room and present somebody else's work and present present the heck out of it because i've been in that room a million times before and i've presented work a million times before the situation's nothing new for me so yeah. it doesn't really matter what the work is i can i can pull it out and i can extract it and do it and he's he's had a he's had an illustrious career at doing yeah. that so i think what happens is when when a young designer starts you know just gets out of university and they they they're looking at you know they're looking at michael janda and then they're looking at uh what you're doing um reagan and and the thing is like they want to be where you are but they don't know that you you haven't been where you are you know it took took years to get you get where you are right yeah. and so like it, it takes a long long time to really understand how to do your business get better at your practice of, of design get better at your problem solving skills get better at communication that's that's huge communication is mm -hmm. key um, so the more that the more that you do it practice makes permanent you just have to make sure that you're doing you're, you're, you're practicing with best practices in mind yeah I think that's interesting in that if I look at how I've now interacted with clients um, in the space of only 18 months, the shift in the way that I approach those conversations is far, far different. And it's not from overly practiced ways of, of changing things up. It's just more a confidence level and a boost to go, okay, I am not too worried if I get this job or I don't. And I think that might be one thing around um, desperation or anxiety of when the next job comes in for designers to, especially if you're, you are solely dependent as a business owner for your family to provide for, which I am in that same case. And you, you wonder when the next job's gonna come in and you just like, <laughs> what do I do now if this, you know, if this next month isn't hitting the same target as what I had for last month? And where's the next job gonna come from because I haven't got any leads come in this last week or whatever. And um, all these things that sort of battle in your mind and, and trying to push that out, you know, how I know how I do it. And it, it comes down to a few things like um, financial stability and um, and not being desperate and having some confidence to know that it always comes through and just that self actualization to say, yeah, it'll it'll all it'll all work out and it'll all happen. Don't worry too much. How do yeah. you go about it yourself, Mario? <clears throat> um, I 
I was reading through an email this morning from uh, Andy Frisella, and he's a mega mogul, you know, has a huge company. Um, and he said something pretty key that I think I've just tried to live by. Um, and he said that, you know, the work that you're experiencing now or the the clients that you that you have now or the how well your business is doing now is because of the work that you did three to five years ago. Yep. And and the work that you do now is going to really pay off in three to five years. So there's always this buffer and you know, and, and it may seem like there's nothing coming in right now, but you know, hopefully you did do that work, you know, a while ago and, and things are gonna just kinda well up again. Um, I love I love the way Jim Rohn puts it. He's like, you know, there's always a there's always spring and everything's great and then there's summer and everything's a little bit fun and but then there comes fall and then there comes winter <laughs> right and that's just the cycle of business if you're going to be an entrepreneur that's the cycle of business and it's always the same yeah there's a spring there's a summer there's a fall there's a winter but then it's followed by spring again you know so we have to we have to know that that the valley and the mountaintops are are all one journey mm-hmm. you know you're not going to be stuck in the valley forever and and don't give up in that valley because um, the valley is where things grow, right? The valley is where all the water is. The valley is where the seeds are planted. The valley, and and it may be a valley time right now. And right now, definitely right now for me, right now it's it's a valley time. Mm. So there, I am I am sowing as many seeds as possible so that at some point I can reap. And and yeah. and you know we we put work in so that we can see success not today, but but in the future yeah. and so that's that's really what keeps me trying to 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 hustle and and get better at my craft and and connect with with amazing creatives and connect with amazing business people i think is just just in general um and and, and you know also the the more you express the the goal of that the goal that you have to be as an as a business person the more you're actually going to bring that into reality the more you're going to actually um, see that actualize. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's a positively speaking thing, but it's true. You know, the more you the more you talk about how good your business will be, and the more you work at it, the better your business will be, and the better you're going to be at it. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of it. The confidence rubs off, and that, and that ability to say this is what I want rubs off on other people, so they see what your goals are, and they they understand what you're about and if they're on the same page as you they want to be a part of that i think that's the infectious nature of of being you know happy and confident and positive that people just want to be there with you and experience the same feelings and they know that if you are going to be on top of your game that they're going to get a good result if they're a client or if it's a fellow designer they're going to be more motivated because you're motivated so if you're putting out stuff like mario does you know to help out your fellow designer that's going to pump everybody up and just be, you know, rather than having it as competition between each other, you know, having that, that ability to pump each other up and champion each other and, and give each other a pat on the back kind of thing. Um, but I love what you said about just the, the, the mountains and the valleys. Like that is, that's huge. It's with any business where you, if you saw a chart of sales throughout a year cycle um, for, for like a retail store, let's say, they're going to have these peaks and troughs and it's generally around things like Christmas or, or um, mid-year sales and that kind of thing. But it's in those down times where you know they're planning something to then bring everything back. And I think as um, owners of a business, if we're having those down times, like you said, and we're not investing the time back into the business to sow those little um, seeds for the future, be it creating marketing material for your business, updating your website and portfolio, reaching out to new business owners, uh, potential clients, let's say, um, or, or being part of a community to see if there are any opportunities out there that you could be a part of. Um, you, you can't just be sitting there, you know, twiddling your thumbs in those down times and thinking to yourself, oh, no, and just put yourself into a dark corner and think to yourself, because nothing's going to happen, as you said. Self-actualization is going to happen where you just put out those vibes and for some reason it just happens. You tell someone that I'm a business owner now and I'm looking for work, funnily enough, some stuff starts coming. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's remarkable how much your personal view has an effect on your personal business. It's crazy. Um, the more you, you know, 
there, there's there there are a lot of things that you can do when those when those troughs come around right when those when those valleys come around there's a lot of things you can do you can give up you can twiddle your thumbs like you said and just kind of wait for the next thing to happen yep. you can go on vacation and just not for, and just forget about it or you can get to work on your business you know i think when the when the when the peaks come we get so crazy busy in our business that we don't work on our business yep. but when the valleys come we get so worried about when the peaks are going to come back that we forget to work on our business yeah. when that's the that's the prime time to actually work on your business. Yeah. Um, I think you did that over over like Christmas break. Yeah. Yeah. You like I, I took like the two weeks self work, partly to do the things I was had on my tick box that I wasn't really getting to, but in the same respect, it was also just taking some time off. Like I think that's yeah. something. I think my next point about this whole set of mindset is to take care of yourself. You know, it's not always about having to, you know, be go, go, go with your business. Like I'll do 70 hour work weeks on my business, be it client work and working on, you know, content or doing this G'day Design Life stuff um, because I, that's me sowing, you know, seeds for the future. But it, it takes a toll and you need to be able to recognize, I think, when when times are just, it's a bit too much and you just got to take a step back and go, you know what? I'm going to take this week off or two weeks off or go on a holiday with my family or just take some time for myself, you know, to do exercise like you do, Mario, in the gym a lot or do yoga or um, all these kind of things that just give you that time away from thinking about this. Because I think that's a big thing is we're always thinking about it. And I heard um, Mike Jander talk about this in his new podcast about how he just wouldn't switch off. They'd go on holidays, but he'd still be in game mode like the whole time, no matter what, and he wouldn't want to switch it off. And now he's at a leisurely point in his life where he doesn't have his agency and he just goes through the motions and can switch off when he needs to. Um, but how how do you find that, like that sort of pressure on yourself when you've got kids, you've got, you know, um, all these things going on as well as your business? How do you set yourself apart from that and give yourself and afford yourself that time? There's a there's a special demand on this, isn't there? Like as as entrepreneur parents, yeah, it's it's really it's really tough because I don't want to switch it off. I, I, I love I love what we do. Oh, same. I love <laughs> yeah. building. I love yeah. building. Con- I think it. I think that's why I can't. I don't want to switch it off because I, I just love doing it. I love interacting with the community. I love um, the the great things, all the great things about social media and being social on there and, and learning about new designers and people and. And business practices and I love bettering myself that way um, and I don't want to turn it off so um, the the best advice that I've ever been given is that you need to schedule in your day time for you to get away and I didn't mean that for to rhyme but that you really do you know like you need to you need to schedule in your day um, time for yourself to be a little selfish and you know selfishness gets a, gets a negative connotation all the time but it's really about self-care right so if i can't uh, i was talking to uh, this training guru in in england yesterday about this very same thing and just um his whole point was he trains per- personal trainers to be better personal trainers right so um his whole business is that and and his his number one thing was prepare for your clients his number two thing was take really good care of your clients three through i think seven were all about self-care schedule time in your day to work out for yourself schedule time to work to to read something new for yourself to to grow as a person you know uh, and all these things that you know make sure that you're eating all these things that we forget to do as i forget to eat all the time because i'm you know a 90 minute sprint will turn into a four hour sprint and i'm just banging away and because you get in that flow state you don't want to stop but you really have to step you have to force yourself to step away and i think the best way to do it is put it in your calendar you schedule it schedule an hour an hour and a half i know that you were doing that walking every morning just to kind of like start that day really fresh um same thing with me i've, I've got to i've got to force myself to to separate myself from from dad to separate myself from business uh from my computer my phone and and go do something completely different like slang some weights around you yeah know? Yeah, I think that's it. Instead of, you know, being eat, sleep, work, repeat kind of thing, it's having a bit of other stuff in between that 
you know, even if it's entertaining stuff, if you do want to go away for 30 minutes to an hour over lunch and watch a Netflix show or whatever, you know, do that. If that's what's going to just take you away and give you a bit of replenishment of your mindset and not be so focused on your work and feel drained yeah. by that work, if that's what it is, um, unless you're really loving it, you're getting into it, then keep the <laughs> rhythm going. But yeah. there's going to be times where it's just going to be a grind and you need to afford yourself that time, I think, to, to really just... You know, give yourself a break um, yeah. and have a Kit Kat. No. Um, <laughs> uh, not sponsored. Not, not sponsored. Yeah, yeah not sponsored. Um, look, Mario, I think that was a fantastic little chat there. Uh, I wanted to keep this one fairly short to see how this goes yeah. better, on, especially on Instagram TV, to see if anyone wants to watch on here. Um, but All it covered right. a lot there because I think mindset is one of those things that it can affect people in different ways. I, hope, uh, I, yeah. I, I bet you would agree. And it's how we can all combat that in our own ways and recognizing what that difference is and how to overcome it. It's not going to happen, you know, tomorrow, is it? Absolutely not. Yeah. And it's like, like anything worthwhile, you, you have to put some time in to really, like I said, investigate who you are, be a little bit more self-aware and, and find, what, find where you need replenishment and continue to do that daily to uh, keep yourself fresh and keep yourself motivated and positive. Beautiful. So, Mario, where can people find you on uh, Instagram especially? I'm guessing that's probably where you want to point people. Yeah, um, you can find me at the Mario Quesada, Q-U-E-Z-A-D-A, um, on Instagram and, and pretty much uh, anywhere else. YouTube, we have some YouTube episodes for our dadpreneur. Reagan was uh, sweet enough to join us one time. <laughs> uh, we're going to be starting that again pretty soon. But um, And my website is uh, made by makers, uh, spelled made, M-A-D-E-X, by which is by uh, then maker madexmaker.com and uh, just hit me up love to talk to you I'll put that in the um, the show notes as well so if you want to check out yeah, Mario perfect. and you can't remember how to spell Mario Casada <laughs> it's all good I'll put it in the notes um, so thank you very much mate for coming on thanks very much everybody else for listening or watching this wherever you are in the world and we'll see you in the next episode cheers thanks